Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube video. So, this is the first video of the series called Brown Paper. Um, let me just introduce you to this series and what I will be doing. So basically, as the name suggests, I will be doing things on brown paper. You see, this is a brown paper. It's a piece of brown paper. Um, now, in uh, in these videos, um, I will be um, having... Well, firstly, you can see this, which is a dip pen. And that's the ink. That's just a um, towel. And then uh, we've also got a fountain pen. So, um, yeah, I don't know if my camera will zoom. Yes. Lovely, um, auto zoom works. Um, yeah, so that's a fountain pen, that's a fine nib, that's a... Come on, camera. That's, um... Eh. That's, um, Parker... Parker I am. And by the way, that is from Westminster Abbey. And then I've got another Parker I am. Uh, I am except that it's not um it hasn't got the personal thing and that one is a medium nib that one is a fine nib um to be honest I'm not quite sure which one I'll be using apart from that I might also be using some pencil from Stetler which isn't a company that make trains um they I think they I believe they pronounce similarly not in German though, but um, they're different companies. Um, yeah, that's how you spell Stetler, uh, the pencil making company. Um, yeah. And then, of course, rubber. I've got a Stetler one and a Faber Castle, Castor one, however you like to pronounce it. And I may occasionally be using tracing paper. Now, let me just show you a bit of my writing equipment. Firstly, let's start with the um, the most uh, old-fashioned one. Uh, let me get my... <clears throat> so, firstly, let's have a look at the dip pen. How it works. Um, so basically, you'll have to dip it, as the name suggests. Um, so what shall I write? Yep, um, that's what I wrote. I don't know if you can see, I hope you can. Um, that's very fine. That's actually finer than my other two pens. Um, As you can see, the ink lasts quite long, but I think I, I've run out of ink on this pencil. So I'll have to dip it again, but it doesn't matter because I've finished writing. And let's just actually, I'll just dip it a bit. Um, let's just put a note. That's the dip pen or quill pen, as some people like to call or feather pen now the next one will be um, the next one I'll be using um, is the um, uh, let's use the medium nib first um, so this one so that's a uh, Parker Actually, why do I write lowercase? Parker I am, and that um, medium nib. Um, and now let's have a look at the um, fine nib. There isn't much a difference between the. Um, the um there isn't much a difference between the um, fine nib and the medium one that's actually finer um 
So, yep, that's the fine nib one. And now let's have a look at the pencil. This is actually HB, because to be honest, I don't really care. Okay, I forgot how to spell it. S-T-E-A-E-D... Wait, hang on. S-T-E-A-D-T-L-E-R. That's actually not very sharpened. Uh, the, the result actually depends on how sharpened it is. Um, I'll just write an example. Okay, so, now that's the example. Um, not very interesting. Um, now let's just jump into the subject, shall we? Uh, in this video, I am going to um, answer questions that have been asked on Instagram. I actually put on a story on Instagram um, on the 16th of September 2018 asking people to ask technical questions that um, tend to be unbiased and I've got four questions and today is the 1st of January 2019 you can tell how unproductive I am that's the day this video was recorded I'm not quite sure when it will be published now let's just hope it won't be that long so the first question is Do you like the sounds in which the ZF Ecomat and Ecolife gearboxes uh, operate? No, create. Okay, I can't even recognize my own handwriting. Anyway, um To be honest, I don't really know. I'm not quite sure what they sound like, but to be honest, I don't really think I care. I mean, I like I like basically everything. Okay, that was not very true, but almost everything. But ZF Eco Matt and ZF Eco Life, I tend to stand um, towards the like side. Um, so I don't know if that answered your question, but I know the difference between. Well, I know a bit of the differences between Eco Matt and Eco Life. So basically. They're both automatic gearboxes. Um, the the Eco Life um, the Eco Life uh, is six speed, and the Eco Mat is four, five, or six speed. However, um, if you have a six speed Eco Mat, each gear ratio is lower than the 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 one on Eco Life. Which means basically, if you've got an Eco Mat, you you've basically got higher gears than the Eco Life. Anyway, the next question is. Oh, by the way, um, Eco Mat, I don't think bosses use them anymore. Um, well, the the previously built one they still do, but most of bosses use Eco. Well, not most of bosses, but Eco Life gearbox bosses they are they they've overtaken the um, eco marked gearboxed so most bosses are gearboxed by um either voice diva or zf eco life uh train wise uh, mechanical transmission that's a train word for a gearbox a mechanical transmission is not very common in uh, on, on british rail however there are some examples of uh uh, diesel multiple units running on a mechanical transmission or I should say mechanical transmissions um, The class 172 has a uh, Ecomat and uh, that, that was made by Bombardier, I think It's either a trans or Bombardier, but I think it was on it was Bombardier and the class 195 which was made by CAF or CAF if you like pronouncing absolutely everything um that one has eco life uh even though eco mat has um a lower ratios than eco life which is potentially more suitable for um high speed operation which is what trains do um the um, actually i shall close this the it doesn't really matter that much because 
the overall ratio is also um uh, it also has something to do with the final drive so maybe the i'm not quite sure if this is true but i presume that the class 195 will have a final drive of a lower ratio since the gearbox is of a higher ratio than the of high ratios than uh, Ecomat. Next question is, do you know anything about duty cards or running boards? Um, I only know a little bit. I guess that different companies use a different use a slightly different system. But basically, you've got a card, yeah, and the piece of card tells you your uh, run number or your duty number. And what routes you shall be running on, and well, um, I can probably read it if you give me one, but I can't make sure I can run that service well. But even though I know how to read it, it doesn't mean I can run that service well because I have to know the route. But duty cards and running boards, I'm not quite sure about this, the difference. Um, but I guess that's what it is, and I think there are other reused them. I'm not sure. You can you can tell from whether it's laminated or not. If it is laminated, it's probably um, on a regular service. <coughs> anyway, uh, the next one is how many BYD electric buses (open bracket made in China) thumb down thumb down emoji um a, a close bracket in UK question mark this is the only question I've got that's got uh, uh, that's actually got a, a question mark, uh, which was impressive. Um, to be honest, I don't really count, but um, I know quite a few operators have some. I think Arriva, not down south, have some of uh, BYD Enviro two hundred. So it, Alexander Dennis Enviro two hundred EV bodied. Uh, BYD K9. That's a K9 specifically built for Inveru 200, I think. Um, London has got a load. Um, not a load, but uh, probably more significant than other places in the UK. Um, <coughs> I heard that Stagecoach will get some for Guildford Park and Ride. Uh, Nottingham has got some BYD K9, not Inveru 200 bodied. London has. Uh, London used to have some. Um, BYD bodied buses. I'm not quite sure if they still do, but I know uh, Lon I mean single deckers K9. But BYD K9 is um currently um well, it, a ADL Alexander Dennis Limited. They um cooperated with um BYD to build electric buses, and London has a lot of them. Uh, the very first batches. I'm not quite sure if it was one batch or multiple batches. They've got a battery at front. Um, it's on. It, it's on the roof, but at the front and inside, um, you've got a LCD board uh, for passenger information, which is very helpful. That's probably the only thing I like about them. Um, those run on five Route Five O Seven between London Waterloo and London Victoria by Go Ahead London. Is it Route Five O Seven? I think so. I, I'm not quite. I'm, I'm not very good at remembering numbers. Sorry about that. Um, and there are some BYD double deckers running in um, in London by Metroline. Those are BYD bodied. Um, the, I I have to be honest. They look absolutely appalling. If you've if you've seen one of my posts, I've actually got more pictures. I'm, I may as well just post them. Um, that one, if you look at the back, the rear overhang is very short. In fact, the rear axle is um, at the back of the passenger compartment, passenger cabinet. Passenger, basically the engine compartment, so the battery compartment extends to the the rear axle from the back. But then the rear overhang is very short. So basically... You can say that they've got no arse. Um, and I also learned that um, ADL is part partnering partnering with... Um, is that a word? ADL is partnering with BYD to make 
electric double deckers. They've they've they're they're already making electric single deckers. They're making electric double deckers. And on a uh, Invaro four hundred CT body, um, but um, BYD, I think it's. I don't even think they can, they know how to make buses. I mean, but uh, I'm not sure. Um, or or else I am sure, but I'm not allowed to say here. Um, next one and the last one is uh, <clears throat> what is a bus? That is a very good question. Um. In English, yeah, a bus is a bus, and uh, this is very interesting, uh, and it's worth talking about. Um, you've got a word bus. It comes from the word omnibus, which comes from Latin. Uh, o a t i n. Yep, and that means for all. So basically, the original omnibus, uh, it was. A、uh, vehicle for all, because it fits more people. And、um, the very first omnibuses, they were draw drawn by horses. So basically, horse powered omnibuses. And after horse powered, they there were steam powered omnibuses. And after steams, there were trolley buses. So basically, electric buses are were invented before. Motor buses, and then after trolley buses, there were motor buses.、Um, nowadays, a bus would be um. Well,、uh, if you're referring to bus in English, there's also some sort of debatable thing, in because um the Americans and the Brits, they don't seem to agree with each other. And um, I, um. I mean, I am supposed to stand on the Brit side, but I am going to stand in between. Actually, I am standing on the British side. Um, uh, in in America, a a bus would be um. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but in America, um, a bus would be a vehicle that holds people. I'm not quite sure how many, but as long as it's a vehicle, it holds people. Um, it's a bus. Uh, in Britain, and I presume many places colonised by Britain would be the same case. A bus is、um, a vehicle that holds,、um, I think, it's sixteen or more people, and it runs on a short distance and is、uh, or, or stops at multiple stops. So basically, if you've got a bus route in a city, that's a bus. But if you've got a route that goes from, let's say, London to Oxford, and then there, the, that those are the only two stops, that wouldn't be a bus because it doesn't stop frequently. That would be a coach. But I think American people call it a bus anyway. So、um, basically, in Britain, you've got peop-、uh, uh, vehicles that、um, carry people, and if it stops frequently, it's a bus. If it doesn't, it's a coach. And、um, there's also something that's smaller than a bus. So basically, under sixteen seats, people like to call it mini buses, but I don't think that's correct. I think they should be called. Actually, I don't think they should be called. They just are called technically people movers, which is a funny name. So basically, if it holds up to eight people. That would be a car, unless it's a lorry. If it holds between nine and a、uh, sixteen, okay. If it holds up to eight people, including the driver, that would be a car, unless it's a coach. If it holds f- between nine and sixteen people, including the driver, I think that would be a people mover, or as people like to call it, a mini bus. It's actually very annoying. Because you, it's even more acceptable to call it a mini coach because those vehicles don't normally run on a regular service and stop frequently or stops frequently.、Um, but、uh, I don't quite understand how people's brains work.、Um, people's brains work.、Um, 
but that that's one of the things that annoys me. The twelve seater, that's not a minibus. It's not big enough to be a minibus, but um basically a bus is a large motorized vehicle that carries passengers and it runs on a regular service and it stops frequently. I am starting to think rail replacement buses should be called rail replacement coaches. But it doesn't really matter, we just call them rail replacements. I've actually I've actually heard people calling it bus replacement, but um then people are idiots. Um anyway, that's the last question. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Good night. And happy new year.